Hi everyone, this is the Power of the Catholic Church podcast. For the podcast today, you'll need to have out the notes called The Power of the Catholic Church and a pencil. You're going to watch the podcast pausing as necessary. When you get to a slide with the sentence frames, you're going to write the question on the left-hand side of your notes and then the sentence frames with the details on the right-hand side of the notes in paragraph form, just like what we did in class last week. All information in this podcast was taken from the textbook from pages 356 to 361. The first slide that we're starting with is the one for anti-Semitism. We didn't get a chance to finish it in class, so we're going to start it here. So write the question, what is anti-Semitism, on the left-hand side of your paper. And then on the right-hand side, you need to fill in the sentence frames here. You might need to refer back to pages 358 to 359 in your textbook to fill out the sentence frames. You'll want to pause here while you finish the sentence frames for your notes. Between 1050 and 1150, a strong wave of religious feeling swept across Western Europe. As a result, more monasteries were built and new religious orders or groups of priests, monks, and nuns were started. As you recall from previous readings, monks farmed the land and developed many new farming techniques to help Europeans grow more crops. For women unable or unwilling to marry, or even widows, an option was to become a nun. Many nuns were from noble families. Most educated women were nuns. Convents became ideal places for studying and writing. In the monasteries until the 1200s, most of the people who joined a religious order stayed in the monastery separate from the rest of society. They lived a simple life of prayer and hard work, but had very little interaction with the people of the towns. Friars versus monks. Friars were a new religious order. They didn't stay in their monasteries. They lived in the towns with the people, and the purpose for them was to go into the world to preach the word of God. They lived by begging or donations from the community. Friars could not own property or keep any personal wealth. The Franciscans were the first order of friars. They were founded by Francis of Assisi in 1209. The Franciscans lived in the towns and taught Christianity to the people. They helped the poor and served as missionaries. Medieval Christians also believed that God blessed pilgrims or religious travelers who journeyed to holy places. Jerusalem was one of the holiest places for pilgrimages. However, Jews, Christians, and Muslims, because they share the Old Testament, all believe that Jerusalem is a holy place for them. This set the stage for the Crusades when Christians and Muslims fought for control of Jerusalem. Today, however, Jews and Muslims continue to fight over control over one of the holy sites in Jerusalem. In Europe, daily life revolved around the Catholic Church. The priests ran the schools and hospitals. They recorded births, performed weddings, and conducted burials. On Sundays and Holy Days, people went to Mass or the Catholic worship service. Many Christians prayed to saints. Saints were holy men and women who died and were believed to be in heaven. Many Christians prayed to saints. Catholics believed that the saints would ask God for favors to answer their prayers. Of all the saints, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was the most honored. Many churches were named after her. Several French churches carried the name Notre Dame or Our Lady in honor of Mary. Here is the second set of sentence frames for this set of notes. On the left-hand side of your paper, write the question, what was the role of monks, friars, and priests? On the right-hand side, you need to complete the sentence frames using details from the slides and from what I uh, told you in the podcast itself. You might want to pause here as you finish your sentence frames. Medieval Art and Architecture As strong governments arose, people in medieval Europe felt safer. As a result, trade, banking, and businesses prospered. A good economy meant more money to support learning and the arts and to pay for new churches and other buildings. Europe experienced a building boom in the AD 1000s and 1100s. Architecture is one way a society demonstrates what is important. Since religion was such an important part of life, church leaders and wealthy merchants and nobles paid to build large new churches called cathedrals. Cathedrals are built in the Romanesque style or the Gothic style. The Romanesque style featured rectangular buildings, large rounded ceilings called barrel vaults. High vaulted ceilings needed the thick walls to hold them up. 
The windows let in very little light because they were small and set back in the thick walls. If you look at the picture on the screen, you'll see that the windows are very tiny, but the ceilings or the roof line is very high. And if you look towards the back of the picture, that is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So this cathedral is located in Italy. The Gothic style of architecture was the second one that was used during this time period in Europe. The Gothic style of cathedrals used the rib vaults and pointed arches. They were much taller than the Romanesque churches. They used flying buttresses on the outside to support the ceilings. The cathedrals had thinner walls and large stained glass windows to let in the light. And if you look at where the red arrow is pointing, that's the flying buttresses on the outside to support the high walls of the church. Now I want you to take a look at the center of the picture on your screen. Find the circular object. It is actually a stained glass window. The circular object or the stained glass window that I told you to look at from the previous slide is featured here. This is a view from the inside of the cathedral looking out. The stained glass windows contain stories from the Bible for Christians who could not read. And this was really important during this time period because since most people could not read the Bible, the stories are actually told through the priests as well as through the stories on the stained glass windows itself. The pieces of stained glass form the scenes from Jesus' life and teachings. The stained glass windows also let in sunlight which began to symbolize the divine light of God. This is the third set of sentence frames for your notes. On the left-hand side of your paper, write the question, what role did the church play in art and architecture? And then on the right-hand side, you write the sentence frames, filling in details from the previous slides and what I've told you during this podcast. You'll want to pause right now. The Catholic Church played a very important role in education. Education first took place in the monasteries with monks uh, schooling people or those young boys interested in growing up in the Catholic Church and giving service to the church itself. Eventually education moved to the bishops' cathedrals and then finally universities became the center of learning. At the university, students studied subjects such as grammar, logic, arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy. Most students did not have books because books were rare before the European printing press was created in the 1400s. Remember, China was the one who first created a way to print books faster, but that technology did not travel across the Silk Road to Europe until the 1400s. At universities, students could earn a doctor's degree in law, medicine, or theology, the study of religion and God. Universities were created to educate and train scholars. In fact, the word university comes from the Latin word for guild. Remember, guild is an organization of people who have the same occupation or job. Students studied their subjects for about four to six years, and after that, a committee of teachers would give them an oral exam, meaning it would be done verbally. If the student passed, they were given their basic degree. Earning a doctor's degree could take about 10 years or more. Today, a bachelor's degree typically takes about four years to earn, a master's degree two or maybe three years, a doctorate uh, degree would take you anywhere between five to seven years depending on the subject being studied. During this time period, because education had moved to the universities, a new kind of thinking began to formulate and that was called scholasticism. Scholasticism was a new way of thinking that changed the study of theology. Instead of using faith, the belief of the Bible and what God said, students began to use reason or science to try to explore the questions of religion. Thomas Aquinas was such a scholar. Thomas Aquinas was best known for combining the church teachings with the ideas of Aristotle. Europeans had forgotten about Aristotle after the fall of the Roman Empire when many classical works were lost. However, Muslim and Jewish scholars reintroduced Aristotle to Europe using copies of books that had been preserved in Muslim libraries. In 1267, Thomas Aquinas wrote a book called the Summa Theologica. It was a summary of knowledge of theology. He also wrote about government as well as an emphasis on natural law. Natural law taught that there are some laws that are God-given rights which no government can take away. Some examples would be the right to live, the right to learn, 
the right to worship, and the right to reproduce. The idea of natural law actually contributed to the writing of the Constitution of the United States, and you'll explore more about that eighth, uh, next year in eighth grade with Mr. Sanchez and Mr. Vo. This is the last set of sentence frames for these notes, and there's actually two different slides. So on the left-hand side, write the question, what role did the Catholic Church play in education? And on the right-hand side, you're going to fill in the sentence frames using all the sentence frames from this slide and the one following. And you'll want to pause here as you finish this set of, set of sentence frames and then click onto the next slide to finish the rest. If you have any questions, please feel free to go back and review all the slides. Um, you don't have to listen to the audio. Again, you can just turn the volume down. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or leave a message on Edmodo.